Hi everybody, welcome to Ash & Co Workshops. This is our instructional video for making one of our rainbows. So I'm just gonna start by going through what you get in the kit. Um, you might have ordered a rounded one like this one here or a raw one, this one's slightly sanded, but either way, you get your rainbow. Could be six arch, could be seven arch, doesn't matter, we're gonna cover them both. Um, then if you've ordered an Osmo colour kit, you will get white and yellow and blue and also red in there. You'll get some cloths, some application cloths to put the Osmo on. Um, you'll get some little stirry sticks that we made for you and a whole selection of pots that you can use to mix your colours. You'll also get two pairs of gloves and a piece of sandpaper as well. So before you start, I suggest you get a roll of kitchen roll is super handy and then maybe some sanding blocks as well so you can do your sanding. I think something rounded is good when you're doing rounded shapes, but also just a little block like this, anything at all you've got will do. Okay then, so let's get started first of all with sanding. So when you are sanding a piece of hardwood like this, this is solid ash, it's a really beautiful piece of wood and it's kind of one of those things. The more effort that you put into it, the more you'll get out of it at the end. But there are some golden rules when it comes to sanding. Now you can see with these pieces of wood here, there are, there are lines and they're kind of running this way down the rainbow. And you don't want to sand across the grain like this. So don't get your sandpaper and sand that way because you'll put scratches in across the grain. And then when you put the finish on, that's when all those scratches will show up. So pay attention to that all the way around the rainbow. So, for instance, on the top of the arch here, you can see the grain kind of moves around a lot. So I would kind of go up and down on this bit here, but on this bit here, I'd need to kind of go this angle because the grain moves across like this, okay? Now, um, I'll show you quickly how I would do sanding. So I'm just gonna get a piece of the sandpaper, just fold it up to a couple of pieces, tear it off. Now I'm gonna put it onto a block. Now the reason you would put it onto a block uh, is because if you use your fingers, you can just put a dip into the wood. So you want to try and avoid that. So I'm gonna use a block and then just start sanding my piece back and forward, okay? Now the key thing you want to do when you're sanding these rainbows is to take the edge off. It's called taking the aris off. So if you just rub at 45 degrees like this, backwards and forwards, and what you're looking to do is take the sharp edge off the wood. So I've done that one there. That's really all that you need to do on the edges. Then on the insides like this and on the outsides, you just want to do it until it's nice and smooth, basically. It doesn't need to be too smooth, but just smooth enough. Um, if you order the rounded one, which would look like this, then the hard work of taking the edge off has already been done for you. So you don't have to do that. Okay, I'm not gonna go into any more detail about sanding. So let's move on to how we color it. Okay then, so that is my rainbow now, fully sanded. I kind of rough sanded mine, I didn't want to do it too much because uh, maybe you'll do something similar. Uh, but if you want to check whether it's sanded properly or not, you can get one of your little Osmo cloths and just run it across the edges. And if it gets caught on the wood, then you know you've got a little rough spot there that you probably need to go back and deal with. So it's a really good trick, these little uh, cloths are really good. Okay then, so next we're gonna move on to the coloring part and what to do for that. But before you start that, the first thing you need to do is protect your clothing and protect the area that you're gonna work in. Osmo will stain your clothes. If you're doing it on your table, it will stain your table. So really do take care with Osmo. Um, it's a proper stain. So um, I'll be back with you when I have got myself sorted out. So I've laid out my colour kit in front of me here. But before we get started, I just wanted to give you a few words about mixing colours with Osmo and let you know what it is. So first of all, it is a wax and oil and a pigment mixed together. It's not paint, so you can't put more of it on to get a deeper colour. The colour that comes out is the colour that you get. Uh, if you want a more opaque colour, you have to let it dry and do a second coat. And that's how you get even more deeper colours. So that's the first thing to mention about Osmo. The second thing is, um, you can see here that the, you know, the red, the green, the orange, blue and everything are all easy to get and easy to mix. But when you get down to this little puppy here, down to kind of indigo and violet colours, it's much more tricky because the red and the blue that you mix them with are very, very dark. So you end up with a very, very muted colour. Um, we've done it all sorts of different ways and you can add bits of white into it, which we'll come to in a minute, and you can try all sorts of different things. Um, but it comes out different every time, really. But you guys should just 
you know, make the colour that you're happy with and go with it. Okay then, so let's move this out of the way, over there. So first thing is we've got our packets. Now we like to start by um, filling up uh, four of the jars, so red, blue, yellow and white. But before you do that, you need to smush the packets around because the pigment will have separated from the oil inside and you just want to make sure that they're properly mixed. You also want to warm it up if you can as well. That works really well. So just do that with all of your packets, then cut the top off, use a pair of scissors because it gives you a sharp edge um, and then it's easier to pour in the pots. So do that for all of your Osmo sachets and I'll see you in a sec. Okay, so I've poured my colours in here and I've got my four spare pots here and I've got a little stir stick. So I'm going to start off with the white. Now you want to split that across three pots. So I just want to put a little bit in, just enough to cover the base of the pot. So maybe a couple of scoops. Okay, and the same in the next pot. Now you're, you're going to use this uh, to uh, do the smaller pieces at the bottom so you don't need that much. So. There we go, I've just covered the base of the pots there. That should be enough. And then put your white stick back in the white because you want to keep that fresh. Now we're gonna do the same with the yellow. We're gonna put some yellow into two pots. So I'm gonna move our whites over here. That's those. And then I'm gonna do my yellows. So fresh stick. Going to Put a bit more yellow in because the orange one is one of the big arches that you're going to want to mix. So you want to make sure that you've got enough. And it might not look like you've got a lot of this stuff, but trust me, it goes a really, really long way. Okay, so I think that'll do for the orange. Okay, brilliant. And then a bit more in the next one over there. Okay then, so first of all, I have got my gloves on. Make sure you wear yours, because otherwise it will stain your skin. Um, but this is how I've laid out my pots. I have um, split my yellow into three kind of roughly equal pots, and that is going to make the orange and green, and of course the yellow. Um, so they're the bigger rainbow, so you need a bit more color in each. So I kind of split it equally. Now the white, I've also split that into three pots, but because they're the smaller rings on the rainbow, you don't need very much. So it just about covers the base of the pot. That's all there is in these two. And then this is the original one. Okay then, so let's get on to mixing our first color. So let's move the ones out of the way that we, that we don't need for now. I think that's really important. Okay, so the first color we're gonna make is orange and that is red and yellow together. Now be careful with this, you only need about three drops of the red because it's so dark. What we suggest is put two drops in and give it a mix up and then see where you're at. And then if you want to add another drop, you can do it, but really go careful. So let's just add one drop, one, two drops. Leave the red stick in the red, get a new stick, and then we're gonna mix it together to see what color that we've got here. Okay, so this is my first orange color. It's not quite dark enough, so I'm gonna add another drop. I might even need two, but I'm just gonna go one at a time, okay? Oh, okay, two, two small drops. Now give that a mix. Now when you're mixing these colors, try and make sure you get all of the Osmo off the sides as well, because you don't want a bit of, you know, streak of yellow to go onto your cloth. So try your best to get every bit in there mixed up. Still not dark enough, so I'm gonna add one more drop. That's it, good drop there. Okay, so I'm happy with this color orange, but you're gonna to have to use your kind of common sense with this because it depends how much yellow you've got in the pot as to how much red you've got to add. The best advice I can give you is just go drop by drop until you get the color that you need. Okay, so that's my red and my orange. Now what's next? Yellow, oh good, that one's done. Put that one there. Okay, so next then on the list is green. So to make green, we need blue and yellow. Now we haven't got a lot of yellow in here and we've got a lot of blue in here. If you put too much blue in here, it's gonna make it really wrong. So again, go really, really careful. Just one drop at a time. So I'm gonna get a drop of blue, one, oh, two drops there. Now leave my stick in the blue, don't forget to do that. Okay, new stick for this one and give it a whirl, there we go. Okay, that literally took two tiny small blue drops and we're done. Hopefully you can see that's the kind of color that we've got. Let me tip it up like that. 
I've just seen some blue hiding away on the side here, so I'm just gonna give that a mix in. Okay then, so that is my green, then there is my blue. So now on to the kind of difficult bit, I think. Um, let's move on to the kind of indigo, violet, purpley colors. Okay, so normally to make a purple color, you would just have red and blue together. But because these colors are so dark, um, we're gonna need to do it a little bit differently. So what we're gonna do is make a pale blue base and then add a tiny bit of red into that and hopefully that should give us the color that we need. So keep your fuller pot of white to one side. Um, this is in case you make it too dark so you can bring it back a little bit, okay? So that's over there. So uh, let's add a, like one drop of blue into the white. So let's just go one drop. Great, that was quite a hefty drop actually. So, okay, give that a stir to make a nice pale blue. Okay, so this is the kind of pale blue we've got here. Now we need to add a kind of minuscule drop of red. So let's just see if we can get one tiny drop here. Okay, that's it, one tiny, tiny drop. Let's give that a mix. Okay, so now I've got kind of a violet, I'll try and show you, kind of a violet kind of there. We want it to be a bit darker than that, so I'm gonna add actually a little a touch more blue. Um, just gonna add just a tiny drop. Okay, there we go. So I'm pretty happy with this color here. I'm gonna try and show you like this. Um, remember, it will be a muted colour, okay, but I'm going to go with that one. Right then, so on to the next one. So with this one, we're going to start the other way around. Uh, we're going to start with a, a red base or a pink base. So uh, I've got my white here. I've got my red stick. And I'm just going to add a drop of red. There we go. Mix that together. Okay, if you've got the six arch rainbow, of course, you don't need to mix this color. You can just go with that one or any other version of color that you want. But if you've got seven arch, you need the next color. So I've got this pinky color going on here. Um, show you, try and show you inside. There you go. Okay, and then we're gonna add a touch of blue into this and to try and make the other color that we need. So, oh, that's red. So touch of blue, one drop. Give it a mix. Okay, so I added a bit too much blue to this one, so I'm gonna add a bit more red, just a tiny drop of red. And then I might add some white again to bring it back. So let's mix this and see where we're at. Okay, so now I'm gonna add, I think a couple of drops of white. Oh, or a big blob of white. <laughs> add that in there. It's still a bit more white because I want this to be the lightest colour. Okay then, so this is the final colour I'm going with for this one. You can see it looks a bit kind of grey in the pot, but that is okay. They are music colours. So then, on to the fun bit. Now we're going to put the Osmo on your fantastic rainbow. So um, just make sure that you, you think you've got enough to cover it. I know you probably haven't done this before, um, but I'm a little bit concerned about this one. We haven't quite got enough color, but I'm gonna go with it. So if it doesn't work out, you guys can see, but I just wanna show you how much I've got in the pot. It's difficult to tell actually. It's just about covering the bottom of the pot and a tiny bit more besides in this one, which is the second arch up from the bottom. Uh, right then, let's get the first bit of uh, rainbow and we'll go from there. Okay, so we're ready to apply our Osmo. I'm just gonna get some kitchen roll, make sure if you've got any little bits of Osmo on your fingers, get them off because you will transfer it to the wood. So it's up to you. You can either go you know, red, orange, yellow, and work your way through the colors, or you can go lightest color first. The key thing to remember is that once you've done one color, spend a long time with a bit of kitchen roll, just wiping your gloves off and making sure you've got all the Osmo off. Otherwise you will transfer it and it's pretty tricky. We've given you two pairs of gloves, so if one gets completely messed up, you can switch to another pair, but really you should be able to do it with one pair, all right? Okay, so we get one of these little, one of these little Osmo cloths here. I'm gonna take my little stick out, just put it on one side. And I'm just gonna dip that 
in. You only need a tiny bit, you can see on the end here, that's all you need, in fact that's loads. And then you start and you just rub it into the wood, simple as that. Now what you want to do is rub the Osmo into the wood, do it kind of as quick as you can, but just keep working it. And then whenever you think you've finished, just hold it up in all different lights and just see, is there any dark spots, um, any light spots where there isn't enough? Okay, so I've just finished adding the red to mine. So I'm not gonna put my cloth back in the Osmo, I'm gonna put it to one side. And you can see I'm covered in it. Also, there's some oil sitting on the wood. I'm just gonna try and show it closer to camera. You can see it's kind of shining. Now, that's what you need to get rid of to get a nice even finish. So I'm gonna put it down on my bench. I'm gonna get my um, kitchen roll here. Pull off a nice big bit of it. Just wipe any sort of major excess off your gloves first and then just give it a good wipe, okay? You really want to go over every bit of it and just make sure that you've got any excess oil off there. So give it a good wipe all over every little bit. Now, if you haven't sanded it properly, you see here, the cloth has got caught on the little bit that I haven't sanded properly. So just look out for little bits like that and just pull them off. Okay, and then once you're done, you see you have a cloth like this, wipe your gloves again. Really, really wipe every finger. Take your time and just wipe, 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 wipe. Once you've done that, get another piece and then just do it again. Wipe over your gloves and then you might just want to go over your piece one more time. Now, once you've done that, put it to one side like that. Um, it will dry in about 12 hours, but it's almost touch dry as it sits if you've done it properly. First thing you should do then is look around your bench area. I've got little spots of red here that I managed to drip. Okay, just make sure you've got those away as well. Right then, now I am ready to move on to my next color. So I'm gonna get my cloth, dip that in the orange and do the same thing. So I don't think you need to watch me do that all the way through the video. So I'm gonna skip to the end and then we'll have a chat at the end. Okay, so this is my finished rainbow. I just wanted to give you a quick bit of safety information before you go. Um, if like us, you've just done this, you should have a load of uh, a cloth bunched up like this. And um, when you've got oil bunched up in cloths like this, it uh, can spontaneously combust. Whilst we've never had that happen in our workshop, the advice is you should um, open the cloths up and leave them out to dry. Once they dry, you can just bunch them up and throw them away. So I just wanted to uh, tell you that piece of information. If you want to keep your Osmo to do a second coat to make the colours darker or, 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 or more opaque, then just put some cling film over the pots and use them again tomorrow after about a 12 hour drying time. Um, they will only last a couple of days though and then they will solidify in the pot, okay? So make sure you do it nice and quick. So hope you enjoyed making your rainbow just like I did and please don't forget to send us your pictures. It really does cheer us up and makes all the hard work worth it. Thanks for watching, bye.